Okay, we have 10 minutes with Coach Saban. We'll go right straight to questions. Please be brief so we can service everybody. We'll go here on the left, Coach, second row. Hi, Tony Sigalas, good morning. Um, there's been some talk in the college football world about how we should address head coaches. Uh, if, if it was up to you, what is your preference? Is it Nick, head, head coach Nick? Nick, how, how would you like to be addressed? Look, I respond to just about anything, and I've been called just about everything. So um, not, not something that's um, really important to me, but I think everybody should have the opportunity to sort of create or make uh, the way they, their expectation is of how they get addressed, and it's not something that's, imp that's really that significant to me. Coach, to your right on the second row. Tyler Shaw with KBTX and College Station. I was just curious your thoughts on Texas A&M, what Jimbo Fisher's building there, and do you see them as legit contenders in the SEC West? I don't think there's any question about it. Jimbo's done an outstanding job there. Um, they had a really, really good team last year and a um, very challenging game for us. Uh, it's always difficult to play there, and we have to play there this year. And uh, I know they have a lot of good players, both sides of the ball. and I know Jimbo from what back in 2000 when we started out at LSU. Um, he's a great coach. He does a good job. He's a good recruiter. He's well liked by the players, and he creates a culture on his team that you know enhances um, very good competition. Players being competitive and putting themselves in in the best position to have a chance to win. So uh, we have a lot of respect for Texas A&M and the kind of team that they're going to have this year. Coach, we'll go on the front row here. Hey, Coach. Talon Martin of Bama Central. Two-part question, uh, both about the receivers. Where do you want to see John Mechie grow uh, as a leader of that unit that doesn't seem, you know, some unproven guys and some with experience? Where do you want to see his leadership grow? And then what does Jamison Williams do for you guys on offense? John Mechie is a very mature player, very mature guy. Uh, is a guy that has always set a good example and been somebody that um, – other players can emulate with the example that he sets. Uh, he's been a good leader in that group. And a lot of the players respond to him in a positive way because he has uh, a very serving personality. He's not kind of confrontational, but he's very helpful. Um, Jamison Williams has um, been very impressive with us this summer. Uh, we felt like we needed somebody who has juice and speed at receiver. Um, to complement the players that we have and some experience because we've lost four first round draft picks in the last two years at that position and he certainly has not disappointed us in how he's added those elements you know to our offense especially in what we've seen this summer. Coach front row to your right. Hey coach Nikki Noto Palmer 09 graduate if you will uh, Atlanta CW 69 sports you mentioned vacation's over. I honestly have a really hard time picturing you on vacation, so I want to know how do you turn it off, and what does vacation look like when it doesn't involve golf or Lake Burton? Well, you know, I, I'm so obsessive compulsive that we only go to Lake Burton in the summertime. That's the only place we go. And we go to our house at Gasparillo Island, which is Boca Grande in Florida, in the wintertime when we have a few days. That's the only place we ever go. So, um, but I do, contrary to public opinion, um, enjoy sort of being away, uh, different circumstance, different environment. I really enjoy the lake. Um, you know, I play golf every morning. Um, people don't like the fact that I take a bath on the dock, dive in, soap up, dive in again, rinse off. It's you know, kind of the hillbilly in me from West Virginia. Um, and, you know, Terry and I get to spend a lot more time together just to enjoy each other, which we don't get to do very often. Um, so it is different and it is good and it does recharge you. And even though I'll still watch recruits on the video and I'll, you know, kind of look at next year's opponent sometimes if it's a rainy day or whatever, uh, it still has helped me learn how to turn it off 
um, so that you're more ready when you have to turn it back on. Coach, to your left front row. A.P. Stedham, W.H.E.P. A.M. and F.M. Foley, Alabama. Coach, is this the most depth you've had at the punting position? And what do you tell Will Reichert after having such a spectacular season? Well, Will did have a, a, an outstanding year last year. And uh, I think the big thing is it's kind of like playing golf when you're a specialist. Um, you know, you have to – consistency and performance is what's going to define your success. And when you have – you know, that kind of success, you don't want to just make that the standard and think that you're going to be frustrated if you can't match that. But you just want to be the most consistent, best performer you can be. Uh, that's what we tried to emphasize with him. And look, we have a lot of punters because we're trying to get, it's not been one of the strengths of our team. Uh, so we're trying to get someone who has the ability to go out there and uh, change field position for us. Uh, a little better than what we've been able to do the last few years. Uh, that's not been one of the, the things that uh, we've done a, a, a great job of when it just comes to punting average, punting performance, consistency at that position. So, you know, hopefully with the guys that we have there now, someone will be able to uh, do a little better job for us. Coach, to your right on the second row. Ryan Hennessy, NBC 13 in Birmingham. Coach, going into last year with a limited capacity, how important is it as a coach for you to have your players have 100% with the fans uh, this year? And do you talk to Greg and your president about how important it is to have 100% capacity this year, Brian Denny? Uh, I think that from a player's perspective, uh, the players that went out early for the draft um, all had very sad eyes when they said that uh, the thing that I regret most is playing my last season and we didn't have 100% fans. So from a player's perspective, I know how important it is for uh, players to um, feel the energy, feel the enthusiasm, feel the passion, uh, because it is a great atmosphere and environment all over the SEC, but uh, also especially at Bryant-Denny Stadium for our players. And it's exciting, and they enjoy that part of the game and the excitement of the game and to be able to go out and try to perform well in front of a lot of people. Uh, and so it's, it's as important as anything to me, but it's also something that has to be safe for the people who do it. So uh, we don't want to minimize that, uh, even though we have a lot of enthusiasm uh, for that to happen. Coach, to your left front row. Coach uh, Drew DeArmond, WZZN Radio in Huntsville, Alabama. Development is a huge part of your program. After spring practice, uh, tell us about the development of some young offensive linemen like Damian George and also J.C. Latham uh, that joined your program and enrolled early. Well, I do think that because we have to rebuild the offensive line to some degree, we have two starters back and um, some other players who have played a significant amount. But we also have a lot of young players uh, I think you named two of them that um, sort of um, – it's important for us that those guys mature and develop and gain confidence in being able to play those positions, whether it's to become a starter or to be a uh, backup who can have a winning performance if necessary and they need to go in the game. So uh, we, we believe in those guys. They have a lot of ability. They have a lot of talent. They're certainly capable, but you know, offensive line is probably one of the most um, important positions to be able to develop because there's so much playing together with the other guys, whether it's pass protection, run blocking, whatever it might be. So um, to have a cohesive group up front uh, that can kind of trust and believe in each other, I think, is really important. and. Those two guys' development will obviously be pretty significant in uh, how that group sort of uh, develops this year. Two final questions. The first one, Coach, to your right, second row. Hi, Coach. Georgia Chambers, WFF 48 in Huntsville. Can you touch on LeBron Ray and what you're expecting from him this season on the field and from a leadership standpoint? Yeah, LeBron Ray is a guy that we have a tremendous amount of confidence in. He's a mature player. Uh, he's a very good player. Uh, he can add uh, a tremendous amount to our defense. Uh, certainly has um, struggled through his career because of injury. He's had several injuries that have kept him off the field. 
uh, at least half a season last year, and then uh, we only played him situationally toward the end of the season, trying to keep him healthy. Uh, but he's a guy that has a lot of potential, a lot of ability, uh, can really add a lot of maturity, leadership, uh, and performance uh, to our defense. And um, hopefully he can stay healthy this year and have the kind of year that I know he's worked hard uh, to be able to have. So um, we're trying to you know, help him have the best opportunity to do that. Final question, Coach, to your left, back row. Coach, Matt St. Jean, WTVA in Tupelo. Uh, with the sh kind of the weird season last year, did it make it more difficult to evaluate the first year of Coach Lane Kiffin and Coach Mike Leach? And what do you anticipate in year two out of Ole Miss and Mississippi State this year? Well, I have a lot of respect for those two coaches and those two programs. And um, I think both those guys are do well. And I do think that uh, it was probably as difficult a circumstance to try to take over a, a team and a program uh, relative to COVID, not being able to have spring practice, not being able to do a lot in the summer with the players. So you're talking about implementing new systems and uh, new philosophy, philosophy, creating new cultures, and not having really much of an opportunity to do it until fall camp started, which started late. Um, so. Um, I think it's really hard to judge, um, but I think both guys did a good job last year under the circumstances, and I'm sure they're going to do even better as time goes on. Thank you very much, Coach. We appreciate your time. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it.